Let go of the past and go forward. Welcome to Live With Passion. I'm Father Cedric Pizzani. I'm so glad you tuned into the program. God's going to speak to you about letting go. You are called to move forward. Love this scripture. It comes from Isaiah chapter 43. Remember not the former things. Consider not the things of old. Behold, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I love to tell the story about this man who exploring canyons in the western part of the United States. And he looks down, it's about a mile down there. He's looking, all of a sudden a strong gust of wind came and pushed him over the edge. Luckily, there was a strong branch sticking out right by the edge and he grabs a hold of it and he's dangling between heaven and earth. He didn't know what to do. He goes, help, is there anybody out there? And he heard a voice that said, this is God, let go and I'll catch you. And he goes, is there anybody else out there? <laughs> so watch this. Scientists have said that we have 27 joints in our hands, 27 bones, 100 ligaments, all kinds of muscles, and they're designed to hold on, and they're also designed to let go. And I'm praying that if you need to let go of some things in your life from your past, especially, you'll be able to let it go and receive the new things. Forget the former things and receive the new things that God has for you. One of the hardest things I had to do in my life was to move. It was in the fourth grade. I was in grade school. My parents decided to move away from Springfield, Massachusetts to a smaller town called Feeding Hills. And I had all my friends. I knew my teachers. I went to that school all my life. And I had to all of a sudden, in the middle of my fourth grade, get up and leave. And it was hard to let, I still remember that last day of class. I had to let go of my friends, let go of my teacher, let go of that whole situation and go to something new. And life is a series of that type of things of letting go and going on to something new. And I've entitled this episode, Let Go and Let's Go, because I've found out that when you let go, God always has a good plan. That's Jeremiah 29, 11. Many of you know that. I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans for your welfare, not your woe. So maybe there's some things that you need to let go of in your life, and I'm hoping that you're going to be able to use the 27 joints and the 27 bones and the ligaments and the muscles in your hands and let go, and let go in your heart. Move forward. I was talking to a woman one time, and she said that she had been sexually abused by her father. Can you imagine? And she was really wrought up about it. And I said, why don't you move on from those memories? Why don't you go forward? And she said, the abuse is all I know. Moving on is scary because I don't know what that looks like. And I told her, don't be afraid of moving forward. Be afraid of staying stuck. Maybe you have some abuse in your background through memory. You've just been holding on to it and resenting and not forgiving and staying stuck. Don't be afraid of moving forward. Letting go is a process that we all have to go through. This is the title of my talk here, Let Go and Let's Go. That's the Great Commission, to go into the world, to go forward. Remember the woman caught in adultery? Jesus freed her, protected her by his wisdom. Whoever is without sin casts the first stone. Everybody goes away and he says to her, Go and sin no more. In other words, let go of the past, let go of the wrongs, let go of the guilt, and go forward. God has a good plan for you. Maybe that's what you need to let go of. Oftentimes people come to my confessional and they'll talk about their sins from the past. 
that they've remembered and they keep dredging it up and they keep rehashing in their mind, let it go. You've been forgiven at the cross. Let it go and move forward. Behold, Isaiah says, I'm doing something new. Streams in the desert, a beautiful plan, something gracious in your future. Life's about letting go. I have had to let go of my parents here on earth. Of course, I treasure them in my heart. They've both died, and we all know what grieving is about. Had to let go of my boyhood home as we moved. I've had to let go of pets that I've loved, dogs and cats, and I love pets. And it's so hard to let them go when they die. I've had to let go of girlfriends. You want to be hurt, get into a relationship, and then break up. I had to let go of golf. I still play a little bit, but not that much because of my physical nature and because of the work that I'm doing now in ministry. I had to let it go. I had to let go of softball, baseball as a young man. And I love sports. Some things you just got to let go. You got to let go of the way things used to be. We like to romanticize the past. And sometimes we get stuck in the past. Life is about letting go and moving forward. God is a forward moving God and has such a great plan for us. So in order to walk forward, we got to keep moving. We've got to keep journeying. It's the pilgrimage. It's the pilgrimage of faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. That's what the Bible tells us. Paul says in the scriptures. So don't stay stuck. Keep moving. There's good things around the corner. You don't want to miss all that God has for you. You've got to let go of grudges and resentments, painful memories, abuse. You've got to let go of control. Yeah, some control is good, but I'll tell you in a little while, it's better to trust. Remember the guy in the branch, when he lets go, he's trusting that God will catch him. And God is faithful to catch us. He has big hands. We're in the hands of God. And then people have to let go of their spouse, some of you, who has passed away. It's a terrible and a very hard thing the grieving that you have to go through. You have to let go of your home, maybe move into an assisted care living home. One of our men, my mother also, when I talk about our men in our community, our religious community, had to let go of the car and driving because he got older. That's a hard thing to do. Life is full of experiences and relationships and difficulties and happenings, it's a series of letting go and moving forward. Let go and let's go. You can't come into the gracious plan that God has for you until you let go. Part of our growth, part of our movement forward is this letting go. This is huge. It's all throughout the scriptures. When Jesus called Peter, James, John, Andrew, I proclaim this in one of my other episodes when I talked about you are called, they had to let go of their nets, their boat, their father, their livelihood, in order to go forward into the plan that God had for their life. So there's a letting go that has to happen in life. When you're a baby, you're, you're clinging on to your teething ring and clinging on to your mother. and So many other things. You've got to let that go and move forward. So in order to grow and move forward, I think you get my point. You've got to do some letting go. One of the hardest things that I ever had to do was finally leave home after college and venture out into the world. I decided after college that I was going to explore ministry. And I got into lay ministry in the state of Missouri. I lived in Massachusetts. Missouri to me was the great wild west. I had never been out of the state of Massachusetts. I remember the going away party they had for me. I was probably 22 years old. Now I'm going to go to Missouri and do some lay ministry, live for a year there, not knowing where I'm going or what was going to happen to me. 
I remember the party, all my friends were there and it was in my neighborhood and we were all gathered and there was cake and it was outside and it was fun and everything. And the pit of my stomach, I had this feeling like disaster. <laughs> it was hard for me to let go because I didn't know my future and I was afraid. I am so glad that I moved, that I didn't stay stuck. I loved my friends and my family, but I let go and I moved forward. And that was the beginning of a whole new destiny for me. Doors started opening, ministry happened. Finally, I was called to priesthood in the midst of all that. I discovered a vocation in preaching. I discovered a vocation in writing, in producing. You see, as I let go and moved forward, the path, the doors, the future started to open for me, but nothing happened while I was staying stuck. It was only as I started to let go. And that's the whole thing. There's, there's always fear, but fear gives way to joy and to destiny and to purpose as you let go. There may be some things in your life right now that you need to let go of, and I'm going to ask you to exercise those joints and those muscles and those bones and those ligaments in your heart. And by God's grace, let it go. Whatever it is, move forward into God's gracious plan for your life. So I'm so glad I let that go and I moved forward. About 20 years ago, I was preaching, maybe not that long ago, but it was on Cape Cod, my home state, <clears throat> Massachusetts. It was Our Lady of Victory Church. It's in Centerville, Massachusetts, right? Not at the end of Cape Cod, about halfway down. And at my mission, my parish mission, about 500 people came each night. It was the church that Carolyn Kennedy was married in. The Kennedys were there. Sergeant Shriver, Eunice Shriver was there. And they heard me preach and invited me over to the Kennedy, Kennedy compound. So I went to the Kennedy compound and I was really happy. I grew up in Massachusetts, so this was an exciting event for me. And I met the, the Kennedys, some of them, and lo and behold, who was there but uh, Maria Shriver and uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger was there and many of the Kennedys and got to talk with them and different things. Maria Shriver was so kind to me and she listened to me and she was so gracious. Subsequently, after meeting her, I've read some of her books and one of her books was a book called I've Been Thinking. Very positive book, has a lot of good advice in it. And she talked about her journey in the book and having to let go of the past. She talked about having to deal with her parents' Alzheimer's disease. Now she's very dedicated to bringing that to an end, Alzheimer's in people's lives. As you know, Sergeant Shriver and Eunice Shriver, they both had Alzheimer's. It was very hard before they died. She had to deal, Maria Shriver, with her divorce and letting go of the pain and the hardship there. And then she wrote in her book about her children growing up and having to let go of the way things were and having to let them go off to school and how hard that was for her. She had to let go, but as she let go, new things opened up for her, like writing books. See, life, the life cycle, and life in general demands that we have to let go. And I understand that it's hard to let go because immediately we want to clench and hold on. But I think letting go is part of the most spiritual thing that you can do. And God is there to help you. Again, I go back to the advice that Jesus gave the woman caught in adultery. He said, forget what lies behind. Go and sin no more and go. And that's great advice. That's exactly what Isaiah was saying in that reading. So we're not in total control of our lives. We have a semblance of control. And I think part of growing in maturity is letting go of control. 
We have a semblance of control, you know, like the channel changer and driving a car with all the gadgets and everything. And if you're an airline pilot, you know what control is all about. But ultimately, we're really not in control. And I don't want to shatter any illusions, but just go to an IC unit of COVID with the pandemic or go to a nursing home or go to a hospital and see some of the sick in there and you will realize that nobody's in control. Michael J. Fox, you may know him. He was one of my favorite actors. He was in Back to the Future, part one, two, and three. He was in the sitcom Family Ties. Very young, good-looking actor, very appealing. Well, one morning he woke up and his little pinky was uh, fluttering and shaking. He just thought it was just something he was going through and well, it developed, went to a doctor and he found out that he had Parkinson's disease. That's a disease when you start to lose control of your muscles and your ability to, to do things physically. And it was devastating for Michael J. Fox because eventually he had to give up his acting career. It took a while, it progressed slowly. And he wrote a book called, of interesting title on it, he wrote a book called Lucky Man. Well, what's so lucky about developing Parkinson's disease? What happened was, is through the development of that disease, he actually was able to reach out because of his fame to those who had that disease and encourage them. He was able to, although he had to suspend his acting career, he was able to reach out to his own family and spend more time with them. And because of his fame, he was able to raise, through the help of others, together, hundreds of millions of dollars for Parkinson's research. So he calls himself a lucky man. And I agree with that. He wrote another book called Always Looking Up. And it was kind of tongue in cheek because Michael J. Fox is not a tall man, so he's always looking up. But that has another meaning to it. Always looking up means you're positive. You're looking ahead. You're looking for the silver lining in every cloud. And that's the way we have to be with life. Life develops, we go forward, and we can't control everything. And it demands that we have to let go of some things in order to embrace our future. And God has a glorious future for us. It may involve suffering, not that God gives Parkinson's or other type diseases, but God will bring us through those things and walk with us in those things so that we can know God in a deep personal way. We just don't get a relationship with God up on the mountaintop. We get it in the valley too. That's Psalm 23. Yea, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil because you are with me with your rod and your staff to give me comfort. So you, you learn how to, how to be with God and God with you in the midst of it all. But it all has to take some letting go. I wanted to share with you also that many people have had to let go of their past who we have heard about. Of course, Billy Graham developed Parkinson's disease. Pope John Paul II, same thing. Muhammad Ali, that's just one disease out of many. I think of Christopher Reeve, who was Superman, who had to let go of being Superman because he got into some kind of a fall from a horse and became a quadriplegic. Think of Johnny Erickson, who became a quadriplegic after a diving accident. And she came to a great faith in Christ and became other-abled, not disabled, other-abled, through her abilities that she discovered as a quadriplegic. One of our priests developed brain cancer. And he was destined to be our leader. He was tall, articulate, pretty young. He was going to be a leader and develop brain cancer. And he deteriorated. And it was hard for him. Of course, it was hard for his family. Very difficult for the community, as we saw this promising leader die of brain cancer. And in his dying, he had to let go of many things.
But I'll never forget what he said right before he died, a few weeks before he died. He said, I look forward to what is to come. And that's right from our creed that comes from the Nicene Creed of the year 325, where we look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. So he was proclaiming his faith even in the midst of his dying. He knew he had to let go of this life in this world for something better. And eventually all of us are going to have to have that ultimate letting go of our life here on earth, but with the great hope that we have. I think that all the little letting goes that we have to go through prepares us for the ultimate letting go of our life and our death. Some of you are older, you're facing, you're dying, and it's hard, I understand. By the grace of God, God help you to let go of some things and to embrace the glorious future God has for you. And he has a glorious future for you. I want to talk to you about trust. I do ministry in the 12-step program. I have written a book called There is a Solution <clears throat> about recovery from addictions. And what I learned in writing that book and what I've learned in my ministry with the 12-step program, People Facing Addictions, there are many reasons for addictions, but one of the main reasons is grasping for control. And ironically, the way out of an addiction into recovery is letting go of control. It's that whole thing of grasping on and trusting. Let go, let God, and I'll trust you, and I'll catch you. That's exactly one of the sayings in the 12-step program. Let go and let God. And I discovered that, just as I know from Christianity, that trusting God is one of the main purposes of life. We have got to learn how to trust God. Most of the time we put our trust in ourselves, in our spouses, in the people around us. And yeah, some people are trustworthy, but I love what the Bible says, put no trust in princes. In other words, it's saying that ultimately you can't trust in people, you've got to trust in God. And what does it mean to trust in God? It means to lean on God, to rely upon God, to depend upon God. That is the purpose of our life. And letting go demands trust. Can I invite you right now as you're watching this program, no matter what you're dealing with, and I know there's a whole plethora of things that people that are watching this program are dealing with having to let go, can I invite you to trust God and move forward and mature spiritually as you let go? In fact, right now, with all the different muscles and everything that you have, Maybe you're like this. This is the mode of receiving. Letting go. Letting God. You've probably heard of Carrie Underwood. She's a great singer, one American Idol. Great country western singer, very beloved by many people. She sang a song where she talked about a mother who was driving. She had a little infant in the back seat. Her mind was on many things. She was speeding, and she hit a patch of black ice, and the car went into a spin. And right in the middle of that spin, she prayed. The woman that was driving prayed, and she said, Jesus, take the wheel. Take it from my hands, because I can't do it on my own. I'm letting go. <laughs> Give me one more chance. I think that's so beautiful. That's surrender. That's surrender. Jesus, take the wheel of my life. I don't know where to drive. I don't know where I'm going. I don't know the way. But you are the way. And I'm inviting you to give Jesus the wheel of your life right now, to let him take the wheel. And it takes some letting go. So how do you let go? Take a deep breath, let it out, and surrender. Be positive. Don't say, I was abused in the past and I'm always going to be crippled. No, I like it when you may have had a hard beginning, but 
you have a glorious future. It's not how you start, it's how you finish. So be positive about your life. Then time heals. Maybe you're going through grieving or through some hard moments in your life right now with your children, with a spouse. Time heals. Do some letting go. And then don't romanticize the past. That's what I did about how physically able I used to be in the past and how I could run. And I was always be so upset when I couldn't run anymore. And God told me, Cedric, don't concentrate on what you can't do. Concentrate on what you can do. And I can do a lot. So don't romanticize the past. Let go of it and move forward. And then, of course, trust God. I go back to the opening story. This man is clinging onto the branch. That's a symbol of trusting in yourself. And he heard the voice of God, let go and I'll catch you. I invite you, let go and let's go. <laughs> Don't just live, live with passion. One of the ways that I'm able to let go is through prayer. I pray, Jesus, I trust in you. Another way is, Lord, lead me, guide me, control me. As you pray, I pray God will help you to let go. People all around the world are being touched by the Holy Spirit, coming into a personal relationship with God, growing in their spiritual life through my program. I get letters and I get donations and I have partners and I'm so grateful, but I haven't heard from a lot of you. Please email me, write me, go to my website, call that number, make a donation, become a partner with my ministry and together we will change this world. We will bring people into a relationship with God and we will help people to grow in their spiritual life. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Don't just live, live with passion. God calls you by name to a personal relationship and inner transformation. For over 14 years, Father Cedric has broadcast Live With Passion on television and radio. Father is inspiring believers and reaching out to those who have not yet come to faith. Because of these programs, people everywhere are hearing the gospel and souls are being saved. Please support Father Cedric in his God-given mission to proclaim the gospel to every person. Father Cedric is a priest with a professed vow of poverty. That means all of your money will be used to help him to reach out with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Many are hurting and lost. Together, we can change the world. To donate to Father Cedric, simply call 844-FATHER-C. That's 844-328-4372. Write us at 430 Bunker Hill Road, Houston, Texas, 77024. Or log on, fathercedric.org, and donate online. Donate one time or become a partner. Simple easy and secure. Thank you in advance for your generosity. Together, we are touching lives and saving souls.